Good morning, everyone. Um, hello, welcome to my first master class. I'm so excited to be doing this. Um, I've been taking some coaching lately, and this is one of my assignments to create a master class. And uh, yeah, I'm shifting that nervousness to excitement, and uh, very happy to be sharing some of the life lessons that I've learned, and uh, looking forward to connecting with you all. Um, okay, <laughs> I'll just get started. Um, for those of you who don't know very much about me, my name is Chantelle Neufeld. I have three teenage daughters. I live in Canada. Um, I'm a hypnotherapist and I'm all about helping people become empowered. Um, I specialize in people who um, are dealing with after effects of religious abuse and also those who have who are grieving because of the things that I've experienced <laughs> for myself. All right, so this masterclass is called How to Be Your Own Hero When Others Try to Bring You Down. I'd like to share with you three key strategies that have helped me. Um, a little bit about my background. Um, I'm the oldest of 10 kids. Um, I was homeschooled for grades one through 12, and um, uh, I was raised in a religious cult. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with how cults work, um, it's when a person uses uh, God and, and fear to control other people and to promote their own agenda. <laughs> Hi, Deanna. <laughs> Deanna is my coach. Um, so anyways, yeah, so growing up in a cult, I was left with a lot of false beliefs. Um, I, I was expected to be perfect, at least that's how I experienced it, how I felt it. Um, there, was, there was a lot of uh, labels that um, people placed on me, you know, that I wasn't good enough in some way, or that I was a bad person. Um, I was labeled as rebellious. Uh, at age 14, <laughs> hi, <laughs> at age 14, um, I was sent away from home uh, to the cult headquarters in Chicago, and after that to a girls school in Texas. And at that age back then, I felt um, very rejected. Um, your story may not be at all like mine. There's not very many people uh, who can relate to that, but um, what may be the same is that we believed things that were not true about ourselves based on um, people we interacted with in our past. Um, there's different kinds of bullies. <laughs> and so I know that everyone has faced some type of bully sometime in their life. Um, there's this quote I'm reminded of by Peggy O'Mara, the way we talk to our children becomes their inner voice. And so we all have that inner voice, that inner critic who, um, you know, we just keep coming up with these things that, these labels from the past. And hypnotherapy helped me really um, with that, like, self-talk, that negative self-talk. Um, to really believe those mirror affirmations. Uh, you know, you talk to yourself in the mirror, but if you, don't, if you don't believe those good things about yourself, then it's not going to click. <laughs> so I needed my subconscious mind to kind of get on board and get the memo um, to believe those, uh, the things that were true about me. So that brings me to the ABCs of how to be your own hero. The A of the ABCs is awareness. So there's many levels to awareness, but the first level to awareness is to be aware of our own thoughts. Um, like I said, to be aware of that inner critic, that it's, that it's not you. Um, when I became aware that that inner critic wasn't me, then I was able to um, like not attach to those thoughts anymore and just ask, is that thought true? I learned that from Byron Katie. She asks the question, is that thought true? Especially when we're feeling bad about something or about ourselves. 
um, to get curious about those thoughts instead of attaching to them because we are not our thoughts, we are not our feelings. We actually are awareness. <laughs> we are a soul. Um, I learned this lesson um, out of the lowest point in my life when my sister and brother died almost three years ago. Um, I learned that to be aware of my thoughts was like watching, like it was watching clouds go by or watching a train go by. And so I would envision, you know, each thought and then I would like, you know, welcome it for tea and, um, and then watch it go along its way. It was very helpful for me to um, just view my life from a different perspective and realize that my thoughts, I didn't have to be um, attached to them. I could just, I could watch them go by. And when I realized that I was separate from my thoughts and my feelings, um, I discovered that it took the shame away that I used to feel when I was like in my past and when I was growing up, I used to feel like a bad person for if I had any bad thoughts or bad feelings or, um, but I realized that I was not a bad person and those were just thoughts. Like I didn't have to become attached to them. <laughs> Yay, Deanna, for your big aha moment. Um, and then, uh, that brings me to my next of the ABCs. And uh, A is for awareness, and B is for boundaries. And my favorite quote um, about boundaries is the definition of boundaries from Brene Brown. Um, her definition of boundaries is, here's what's okay for me, and here's what's not. <laughs> so boundaries are not division, boundaries are respect. Uh, my coach, Deanna, had this uh, beautiful metaphor about picturing your life as a piece of land uh, with a fence around it and with a gate you know, with grass and it's our job to take care of our own grass and it's other people's job to take, a, to take care of their own grass. Um, that brings me to uh, a quote, um, I'm trying to remember who said it, but basically we are not responsible, responsible for other people's happiness. Um, oh yeah, Bryant McGill. I wrote them on my little three by five cards here. <laughs> you are not responsible for other people's happiness and they are not responsible for yours. So I found that growing up with a controlling, uh, uh, controlling authority figures <laughs> that um, I developed a codependency where I felt that other people were responsible for my happiness, but more importantly that I was responsible for their happiness and that's not not the case at all <laughs> um yeah it's just very important to learn boundaries uh so that you're not a doormat people don't walk all over you you can learn to say no um hypnotherapy helped me a lot with my boundaries um because i had these coping mechanisms um from growing up the way I did, in order to keep myself safe, in order to get love, I had to be a certain way, I had to make other people happy. Um, but now as an adult, those coping mechanisms were just not serving me anymore. In fact, they were making my life <laughs> not so good. <laughs> um, so hypnotherapy helped me to shift uh, those beliefs and to help me make better choices and to help me say no. Um, because like when you have manipulative, narcissistic behavior <laughs> that you have to deal with, um, it, it produces that codependency. So we have to be aware of that and we have to um, make sure that we have our boundaries, we have our, our, our land and our, our gate and our fence and we have it all set up um, so that we can, uh, yeah. <laughs> Boundaries is everything. Without boundaries, nothing else works. So, yeah. And that brings me to letter C in the ABCs. We have uh, A for awareness, B for boundaries, and C for compassion. 
compassion for yourself. <laughs> um, when I went to therapy, my therapist kept saying to me, this is what she said the most, uh, be gentle to yourself. You're doing the best you can. Because the self-talk that had just stayed inside was coming out then when I was in therapy. And, you know, I was I used to say, like, oh, I'm so stupid, blah, 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 or whatever. And she'd stop me and she'd, like, interrupt that pattern and interrupt that loop and be like, you know, be gentle with yourself. You're doing the best you can. Um, I had to reparent myself, like, give myself, um, you know, comforting advice, give myself... Um, you know, a pat on the back, encouragement, like taking responsibility for my happiness meant doing that. Um, I'm reminded of this seminar. Uh, I was watching a Kyle Cease seminar. It was like really cool. He brought uh, these two people on stage. One was uh, a, a middle-aged man. Uh, he was uh, dealing with um, like this negative self-talk and taking care of everybody else and they brought this little 10 year old girl up on stage and uh, they kind of played out this little play or she would be like asking him am I good enough you know and and then he would answer her and say like oh yes you are good enough like and then she'd be like but they said you know the bully said that I was this and this and this and then he would be like no you know like you're worthy you, you don't you know those things that they said about you are not true and um it was such like an amazing metaphor, amazing picture for me to watch that play out because the child, you know, represents our inner child um, and how we need to um, answer that inner child and be like, you know, it's okay, you know, you deserve love and respect, you, uh, you're doing the best you can, you know, <laughs> all of that. Yes. <laughs> um, where was I here? Oh yes, compassion. Um, compassion for others too. When you have compassion for yourself, that that tends to spill over to compassion for others. Now, let me be very clear: uh, compassion without boundaries is not compassion at all. Um, boundaries are essential for happiness and healthy relationships. Um, abuse is not okay. It's not okay what they did. But it's also not okay to let it eat me up inside forever. <laughs> Nobody wants to be like weighed down by that stuff. And I found that hypnotherapy really helped me shift that perspective and to let that emotion go that was attached to um, past abuse. Uh, to be able to recall the past without getting stuck in it, without you know that part of me being stuck way back there. Um, I'm reminded also of this, um, I don't know, I think it was like a commercial on YouTube or something where they had these two sort of best friends sitting face to face to each other on these chairs, but beforehand they had them write out how they saw themselves, like how they looked and how they, um, just their personality, what they thought about themselves. But they, what they didn't know was that they would then be asked to read that to their best friend as if they're saying it to them. And they could like hardly like it almost made them want to like throw up as they were saying these awful mean things to their best friend. Like who would say those things about how you look or or your personality? And it really was another eye opening experience for me to um, to be gentle to myself, to be kind to myself. Like it seems like common sense, <laughs> although it was just a huge life lesson for me. Um, yeah, compassion helped me a lot in my life. Um, there was like a lot of, what? how would you say it, uh, dysfunctional family dynamics and loss and complicated grief that I had to deal with. There were like earthquakes in my life that really shook me up uh, when my siblings died. My parents switched religions and everything was different because they didn't celebrate the same holidays and blah, 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 long story. <laughs> Um, compassion really helped me to seek to understand um, them, to forgive myself for, you know, you always look back and think, what if this, what if that, but to really make peace with what happened, um, to make peace with what was, um, to 
yeah, just to make peace with everything. There was a quote that pulled me through that most difficult time. It's a quote by Jack Hornfield. It says, to let go does not mean to get rid of. To let go means to let be. When we let be with compassion, things come and go on their own. So that brings me back to that metaphor of your, your piece of land with your grass and your, um, your fence and your gate. Yes, to let uh, relationships uh, come and go on their own, to not feel like I had to fix everything or um, that I had to let people in to be a part of my life that were um, showing toxic behavior, that I could just um, be who I was and let, you know, if they wanted to come back and be a part of my life after learning their life lesson or when they were ready, or even if they never did, that it would still be okay because, um, because of compassion, because trying to see life through their eyes and understand why they made the choices they did. And so now to um, review the ABCs of how to be your own hero um, when others try to bring you down. Uh, there's this quote uh, by Yogi Bhajan. If you view others' behavior as a reflection of their relationship with themselves rather than as a statement of your value as a person, you will, over a period of time, cease to react at all. So basically what that means is, you know, you don't have to put your energy into <laughs> when other people do you wrong. You just kind of have to realize that they're over there on their grass and you're over here on your grass and whatever they, they're saying is, is really about them. And so, um, yeah, <laughs> there's another quote. I'm not sure who said it. Energy is the currency of the universe. When you pay attention to something, um, when you allow your consciousness to focus on someone or something that annoys you, you feed it your energy, and then it reciprocates the experience of being annoyed. So be selective in your focus because your attention feeds the energy of it and keeps it alive. So focus on what you want instead. Um, and I'd just like to explain a little bit about hypnotherapy and the subconscious mind. Um, I like to think about it as learning how to drive a car. I have teenagers and I have one who's got their learners right now. So I'm in the passenger seat and they're driving me around and um, it's all new to them, right? So she's like being aware of every little thing like oh the lights turning oh there's a person walking oh what do i signal do i what do i do because it's all brand new um and so that's like the conscious mind you know the conscious mind is very like analytical um it's uh, it thinks and plans it's responsible for the short-term memory and uh my oldest daughter she's been driving for a few years now and so she drives subconsciously because you know you know how to drive and you don't really think about it that much you can listen to songs you can think about something you can be totally in your own dreamland and somehow automatically you know where to turn when to signal you know who's around you all those things right so, uh, so the subconscious mind is um, responsible for long-term memory it's got all the emotions uh, the creativity the intuition and so the subconscious mind is really important. It actually, 90% of everything, all of our behavior, you know, it's subconscious. 90% is a lot. <laughs> and only 10% is a conscious mind. So um, it's just very important. And when I learned how to access the subconscious mind through hypnotherapy, it was a total game changer because I was able to shift... Um, the pathways in my mind to like autopilot right to instead of uh, going down this road that I used to go down um, where it led me to uh, self-doubt or you know those types of things or the road that I went down for the lack of boundaries to saying yes to everybody and everything 
instead I shifted those. And so now I went down the road, the pathway in my mind um, that said no, or that um, it put up the proper boundaries uh, so that I can have um, happy, successful relationships. Um, so now I would just like to invite you, if you want, uh, to go ahead and uh, close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. And we'll do a little self-hypnosis because all hypnosis is self-hypnosis and you're in control at all times and aware. And so just to close your eyes, take a few deep breaths. And just let your beautiful creative mind just imagine, visualize and think about the color of relaxation. Whatever that color is, just the first color that pops into your mind as being the color of relaxation. That's right, and then I'd like you to experience that color as if that color could flow like a wave from the top of your head, slowly moving down your body. So just picture that color of relaxation starting at your brow. Just relax your, your brow and your face and your jaw. Just gently relaxing your neck and your shoulders. And just have that wave, that color of relaxation. Just slowly move down to your elbows. Moving down your arms into your hands and your fingertips. So that wonderful color of relaxation just spreads. And now I'd like you to picture that color of relaxation just going down from the top of your spine all the way down your lower back. Calmly, easy, easily and comfortably just feeling Wonderfully relax, just send healing to your lower back and just relax your stomach and have that color of relaxation just flow into your hips and then just have it slowly move down your legs and then come to your knees. Just feel that wonderful color of relaxation. Just have it keep flowing like a wave, just down the rest of your legs to the tips of your toes. That's right, feeling fully comfortable, fully relaxed. And then I'd like you to imagine, visualize and think about the color of empowerment. Just that first color that comes to your mind. What is the color of empowerment? I'd like you to remember a time when you felt empowered. It doesn't have to be something big, it can be the smallest thing. Just go back in your memory and think about a time when you felt empowered. And what does that feel like to you? Just really feel that feeling of empowerment as you're remembering that time that you felt empowered. And just let that color of empowerment and that feeling just grow and expand just go ahead and take on the posture. Take on the posture of empowerment, the posture of a hero, whatever that means to you. Just feeling that all the way through your body. And just feel that and experience that. And in a moment, I'll be speaking in the first person. And it will be as if it is your voice talking inside of your mind, helping you to internalize the empowering words that I'm giving you. Just taking a deep breath and just say it along with me. I am the explorer of my own truth. And I give myself permission today to be my own hero. And I am learning to be resilient. And I am in the process of becoming liberated. And today, I am choosing to set myself free. And I am a conqueror. And I am worthy because I am a soul. And I deserve to be treated with kindness and respect. 
And now I just have a few questions. And just think about them in your own mind and whatever comes up is the right answer for you. What does it mean for you to be your own hero? Just think about that for a minute. And what is one thing that you can do today to be your own hero? Just think of that one thing. It doesn't have to be big. It can be a small thing. What can you do today to be your own hero? And now I'm going to count up from one to five. One, slowly, easily, calmly and gently. Two, feeling centered and balanced on every level, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And three, enjoying all the parts of you that are in, in agreement to how you want them. Four, feeling revitalized as if your eyes are bathed in cool, fresh spring water. And five, bringing you back to full awareness, wide awake. <sighs> Doesn't that feel wonderful to be empowered, take back your life? <laughs> and I'm going to be uploading a video every day for the next few days. Um, it's going to have a quote, which has a life lesson that I've learned and a story. I hope you enjoy those. They'll be right here on my page, Mindful Regeneration. If you'd like to make an appointment with me for counseling or for hypnotherapy, uh, you can message me on Facebook or email me at mindfulregeneration at gmail.com or you can visit my website, mindfulregeneration.com. And uh, I offer a free call um, to see if you and I would be a good fit to work together. And uh, I hope that you have a wonderfully empowered rest of your day. All right, bye-bye.